It's time to start in on this bad boy. Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe. We have new videos every week and you don't want to miss out. This week we're actually going to start a series on the Lion Miniature that I unboxed a few weeks ago. I'm really excited to get some paint on this guy and get him ready. But today's video is actually going to be about prepping a resin model and the considerations we have to make before we do that. So I'm going to go over the tools I use, some tips and tricks, and just basically how you deal with a resin model if you're not used to working with that type of material. One important note before you start anything, the first thing you always want to do with a resin model is to clean it. So they use mold release when they're making resin and casting it, so you may want to make sure you get all of that mold release off. So you can use Simple Green, you can use LA Awesome, you could use actually just any kind of dish soap that's going to cut grease. Just you want to wash it off in something to clean it off. I always use kind of lukewarm to cold water when I do that because hot water tends to warp resin. We don't want to use hot water if we don't have to. But we just want to do something. I, I use, normally use an old toothbrush. I just dip it in whatever I'm using to clean it, scrub it with the toothbrush, and just make sure all that mold release is off there before we get the process started. Once you have that done and your model's nice and clean, we can get started in on the process. So let's get right into that. So here are some tools you might need. You probably don't need all of these. These are just what I keep handy. So some things you definitely need. You want some sort of clippers. So a pair of nice clippers. You want a blade, an X-Acto blade or something like that to cut. Replace your blades often. You want something nice and sharp here. A dull blade is going to scratch up the resin and you're going to have a hard time. So you want a fresh blade on your knife. Some other things. This is a sanding stick, so this side's a hard, heavier grit, this side's a lighter grit, but it's just to help sand down the mold lines. Also to sand down the mold lines, there's this sort of sanding stick. I have needle files. This is a round one. This one is a triangle, so this side has flat sides. This has round sides. Th that's helpful. Piece of fine grit sandpaper. This is a 200 grit, so it's just a little piece of sandpaper. Then. This is an 8,000 grit fine sanding pad to help finish things up a little bit, so you might want a fine sanding pad. Again, you don't need all this stuff. We're also going to need to glue everything together. For that, you're going to want some kind of super glue. So super glue is what you're going to want for resin. And then we might have gaps to fill. So for that, a lot of people use green stuff. I actually prefer Milliput. So this is what I use to fill the gaps. You can just, it smooths over nicer. You can use either alcohol or water to kind of melt it a little bit. And really smooth it over and to help with the smoothing i have two tools i have both a metal tool and a silicone tool here so we just want some tools to help shape that so again you probably don't need all of this stuff but this is just what i have on hand but what you definitely want is clippers a knife and one of these things so something to sand down with either a file or some, kind of some kind of sanding pad and of course don't forget your glue so first up, we're going to have a tip about how to glue things together a little bit stronger. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm scoring lines into the piece with my knife. So this is just going to create a little bit more surface area and tension to help the two pieces stick together. So sometimes at resin miles, the super glue doesn't like the whole grate. Part of that's cleaning the pieces off, but part of that is making sure the connection is going to stick well by putting these score marks on it. So now that the score pieces are there, just super glue, stick the two pieces together. You can use some accelerator if you want. So next up, when you're going to cut pieces off the injection ports like this, don't cut right up against it. Move a little bit farther away. It's just a little bit safer so you don't make a mistake and the piece gets some kind of chip in it. So again, we're starting a little bit farther from the injection port. And then once you have it off the main piece, then you can Cut the injection port down with your clippers. Now you can see that part's not completely smooth. There's a couple ways to smooth that down. First thing I'm gonna do is take my X-Acto blade and just trim the last bits of it off like that. But you can still see there's mold lines and stuff. We just need to clean that piece up a little bit more. So what we're gonna use for that is the sanding stick. So we're just gonna Sand it with a sanding stick, 
So there's two sides to this. The one side is a little bit coarser, which is the side I'm using now. And then you can flip it over once you do that to the finer grit to make it a little bit smoother. So sometimes you have weird injection ports like this that are kind of hard to get to. So I'm going to start with the clippers and just cut as most of it off as I can smoothly. But there's still quite a bit of it there, so we're going to go in with the X-Acto blade and just trim the rest of that off. And now another way to smooth, instead of using the sanding sticks like we did last time, we can just use that X-Acto blade itself and just scrape across the surface and just smooth everything down. For nice flat areas like this, that's a good way to uh, clean it up, is just using the X-Acto blade. Sometimes you have curved surfaces right here. You see how you have that mold line running down and there's a lot of detail. So we want to be careful with this part. So I'm going to go to the needle files. So I'm just going to go right across inside those divots. Try to avoid that raised area. Again, we don't want to get rid of the detail. We just want to sand off that mold line. And you can kind of see I'm using that rocking motion following the curve of the surface so I don't create a flat spot. Again... Same thing I'm doing right here, following that curve of that surface with the rocking motion. We can use the fine edge of the sanding pad to kind of smooth that out a little bit more. You could go in with a knife too here and smooth it down a little bit. We want to use different tools depending on the delicacy of what we're trying to sand. Sometimes you want to pin pieces together, so using your pin vise, you can just drill holes. I'm using a paper clip as a pin here. So once you have your hole dr drilled in, just put a little bit of glue on the pin. Is a paper clip in this instance, and stick that down in the hole you just drilled. I'm going to clip it off. I'm going to leave a little bit of a length because that way I can use it to pin to a painting handle later. And then kind of line it up where you want it. There are different ways to do this. You can put paint on the end, but I just kind of pushed a little hole. And again, now we're just going to drill that hole in the other surface area. And it's in quite nice. If you have to adjust it, you can adjust it a little bit. Sometimes pieces are bent like this, so I'm not using this sword on the build I'm doing, but it's quite bent. So all I have here is a cup full of hot water. You can just dip it in and straighten it out. And that quick and easy, the piece is straight. So it doesn't actually take much effort for bent pieces. You just dip it in hot water and straighten it out. You shouldn't have any problem. See, that's pretty much dead straight now. And sometimes you have little gaps, so that's what I was talking about the milliput in the beginning. You just mix the two pieces together, and like a cooking show, I prepared this ahead of time, so I have the two halves of the milliput mixed nicely. Just putting it in that little gap there. It's hard to keep it in front of the camera and do this. So then what I'm doing is I actually just poured some isopropyl alcohol on my mat there. And I dipped it in there, and I'm smoothing it out with the silicone tool. You can kind of see with the isopropyl alcohol on there, it actually melts the milliput a little bit, so it really helps smooth it into that gap. But just keep working it until you're happy. You can use the metal tool for hard edges, but for something flowing like this piece of tabard here, you really want the silicone tool to help kind of smooth it over. And if you need more of the alcohol there, dip in a little more of the alcohol as it's focusing on my hand, not the model. And you can see that looks pretty smooth now.
Once you have the model assembled to your liking, you're ready to prime. I'm actually probably going to keep the cape off of this model while I paint it just for ease of access to some stuff on the back, but you can do any sub assemblies you want. For priming models, I normally use Viejo Surface Primer, but I actually don't like this for resin and metal models. This is mainly what I use on plastic. For that sort of thing, I actually am going to go with the Alclad. So this is actually a lacquer primer, so it's a little bit more durable and strong, and it also uh, is sandable. So you can use it to fill minor imperfections in the sculpt. Again, you can use whatever you want to prime, but I always prime through an airbrush, and again, this is what I normally use, but for this model, I'm gonna go with the Alclad. And once your model's primed, you are ready to start the painting process, which is going to be our next video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out when part two comes out, which is going to be painting the black armor. I hope you found this useful. If you did, I would appreciate a like. Is there any tips you have for when you build resin models? Leave them in the comments below so we can discuss. And if you want to discuss, I actually recently started a Discord. So if you want to talk about models, get some tips, show your models off, feel free to join that. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So it's going to be an invitation so you can join our Discord. Until next time, keep on gaming and paint your minis.